September 11th, 2001, unmistakably marks a turning point in history and has set the tone for the current political climate, both nationally and globally. The horror of that clear autumn morning will forever be burned into our collective psyche. The collapse of the World Trade Center buildings illustrates a strange convergence of physics, engineering, ethics, and politics. To this end, it is my honor and great privilege to introduce Stephen E. Jones, Professor of Physics from the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Brigham Young University. His uh, vita is too long to read, so I will just turn the time over to Dr. Jones. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get started. We have a lot of material to cover. In fact, I think you'll find it's like trying to get a drink out of a fire hydrant. Um, uh, I apologize. There's just a lot of material out there. Now, even then, I can't expect that you'll be able to absorb all that, uh, especially if it's your first time looking at this material, all that we're going to discuss tonight. Now, tonight as we are starting, I noticed that uh, this uh, clip here, which is the fall, the collapse of Building 7, World Trade Center 7, I might say WTC from now on instead of World Trade Center, and uh, as you notice, it dips in the middle, falls straight down and very rapidly, and uh, that's B, World Trade Center 7. Over here, we have uh, a large... As you see, a high rise in Madrid, Spain last year that burned. It was an inferno for about 24 hours. It did not collapse. And indeed, there has been no example, at least none before 9 11, 2001, where fire has caused a building to collapse completely. <laughs> so this is A, but that is, in fact, the official explanation of the collapse of Building 7, that it was due to fire. Now, this is a controlled demolition with explosives, different views. This is in Norway, Oslo, as I recall, and uh, shows, again, the straight down rapid collapse using explosives. So it's not nutty to say, let's get that straight, that this looks like it could be a controlled demolition due to explosives. I hope you would agree that at least there is some comparison here that looks fairly similar between the collapse of uh, World Trade Center 7 and this, which of course is uh, done by explosives. The outline is on your uh, notes as well. You can see how we're doing. I'll start with the physics. I'm quite comfortable with talking about the physics. I've studied it, discussed it with many scientists and engineers in the last several months. Uh, I find it quite fascinating. We'll then talk about the uh, highly toxic dust and so on. The goal tonight I have in mind is to preserve constitutional law in the United States. Now, I love America and I love the Constitution of which, which uh, Patrick Henry, George Washington, Ben Franklin, you know the list. My daughter knows the list better than I. <laughs> Um, she studied the Revolutionary War at length. The, these men uh, were considered rebels. We call them patriots, but the British called them rebels because <laughs> they wanted independence. They wanted freedom. They wanted certain rights, a freedom of religion, freedom of speech. We have these. And I hope that we'll continue <laughs> you know, with these. The truth shall make you free. Right. So let's see if we can get some truth going, shall we? Here we go. We've looked at this. Let's go on. So here's Building 7. We'll start there, the collapse of Building 7. On the afternoon of 9-11. Now, it's important to realize that uh, Building 7, uh, it's here. We're looking now after the, both towers have collapsed, looking from the plaza area over at, to Building 7. Building 7 was never hit by a plane. No plane hit Building 7. Okay, clear. 
<laughs> okay, good. So the towers were each hit by a plane, of course. We'll talk about them later. Building 7 was not hit by a plane. There was no jet fuel, which is a bit, we'll talk about the jet fuel as well. The fires were random, but not particularly large. It's certainly not an inferno. It collapsed seven hours after, the, after both twin towers had fallen. It's not like it's immediate. Um, it's not like a shock from the falling of the towers somehow made that fall, which would, you'd think, happen immediately. We'll talk more about that as well. The official theory is uh, uh, damage and fire. Now, here in this photo, you see the fires in Building 7. A close-up, and then you can see, see a little bit of fire in there. Not much, and yet when it collapsed, it collapsed straight down into a, a tight rubble pile. And uh, very curious. In fact, engineers were baffled over the collapse of this building. And uh, myself, I didn't see it on the day of September 11th. When I first saw it, though, I thought, this is very strange. I mean, that that building should collapse straight down and rapidly. Uh, it just did not look like uh, what I'd expect from uh, law of entropy, which is things topple over. And indeed, uh, other scientists and engineers have worried about this mystery of the collapse of the 47-story Building 7. Experts said that no building like it, a modern steel reinforced high-rise, none had ever collapsed because of uncontrolled fire before. Fire and the structural uh, damage would not explain steel members in the debris pile that appear to have been partly evaporated. Now that takes a very high temperature to evaporate steel. Hmm. We'll see how that could happen. It's not due to fire, ordinary fire. Okay, so this is now uh, some photos. Uh, we see some photos uh, in the late afternoon. Uh, not a lot of fire seen here or, or damage. There is damage if you look close right down in this corner. The corner from the Tower 1 uh, did cause some damage here, which would make me think that it would, uh, if it's going to fall, it would fall towards the southwest corner. And maybe immediately, too. I mean, if you damage something, you know, knock your knees out, you start to fall, okay? But that's not the way. Instead, it came straight down. It had 24 steel beam core columns, enormous uh, steel beams up the core, 57 perimeter columns. A student uh, drew this. The damage was here on the corner and some damage here on a floor. No nothing severed in the core, uh, we're quite sure. No evidence of that. So why did it fall symmetrically down if the damage is on just the south side? And why did it take seven hours? This is a good question, I think. See, here's what happens when you have uncontrolled um, collapses, okay? <laughs> Uh, this is what you expect from earthquakes. In fact, these buildings were toppled by earthquakes. They fall over, they topple over, they don't fall straight down. Um, and so, again, uh, uh, it's just uh, not uh, reasonable that Building 7 fell seven hours after the collapse of the towers. Uh, that could not be due to seismic waves. And if it were, it would have fallen immediately and toppled to the side that was damaged. That's not the case, of course. So. This is out. This is what you'd expect, though, also from uncontrolled fires, uh, some, something like this. You'd expect it to topple, um, twist, bend, and uh, cause much more damage than it did. It collapsed fast. And uh, if you uh, study this video clip, I've got here second by second uh, from my friend uh, Jim Hoffman, WTC7.net, an excellent place to get detail, by the way, about... Uh, 9-11. Jim has done a lot of research. But in uh, timing this, and with some students, we had a number of students time this, it's 6.6 .6 seconds to fall. And the free fall time, if you dropped an apple off the roof uh, without any air resistance, would be 6.0 seconds. With 